All right, today's video is going to be a really short one where I just talk about a topic of interest that has slid into my point of view. There are uh, two new war games for a new genre of sorts that's kicking out. Turnip 28 and Sludge. Both are part of what you might call Napoleonic Apocalyptic. However you want to shorten that, it hasn't been shortened properly yet. But it is a very art-heavy war game. It's about converting your own models, having your own feel. You don't buy miniatures for Turnip 28 as they come. They must all be converted. And I don't have anything for this. I don't have any rule books printed. I don't have any miniatures converted up yet. But I will be showing the PDFs and the website available. And we'll see what we go with from there. It must be noted these are new games. Turnip 28 was first shown well, the first, the oldest Patreon entry for Max Fitzgerald, the creator of Turnip 28, was June 18th of 2020. Sludge, by comparison, was first uh, modified and uploaded to the War Games Vault on June 3rd, uh, 2021. They're both 2020-plus uh, 20, 20 generated war games. They're both brand new and very independent. The only way to get Turnip 28 is through... A PDF on the Patreon. That's what you're seeing here. And of course you can buy copies of Blaster number three from War Games Vault and that's how you get a copy of Sludge. That's the first one I've ever heard of before I heard of Sludge. Someone else came up and said, hey you should try Sludge, but I'd already heard about Turnip 28. Its aesthetic is a combination of uh, Hieronymus Bosch and the ugliest side of Napoleonic you can muster. The game altogether has a very Warhammer fantasy from the 1990s kind of flavor to it, and that I love. Here we have some of the uh, penmanship that you would see cornering a page, just like you would in some of the older rule books. The game is actually very simple to play. There's no point value. You uh, have one ruler who's called a Toph, and he may have as many toadies as you want to, as long as both sides has the same number of Toffs and toadies. Your Toph allows you to bring two units into your regiment. So your unit is called a regiment. A TOF allows you to bring two units into a regiment and each additional toady is an additional unit into your regiment. So a TOF and two toadies is the structure of command required to have four units on the table and that's what they recommend for a standard game. It typically plays on a 4x4 four four or 6x4 wargaming table. Smaller games can play on a smaller surface. In Turnip 28, you do roll for your orders, so I do like that. You can order your troops to do something. They'll usually fail. The good news is that whether or not you succeed in your orders or you fail in your orders, your troops can still do something, just the quality of which it gets taken care of. Movement's actually pretty lenient. There's a lot of movement items in this game where if it would cause a cluster, you just kind of move around the cluster. Shooting and melee work the same way they do in most war games, generally. You grab a bunch of dice equal to the guys who are shooting, and you throw those dice first as a score to hit your target. When it comes to building a force for turn of 28, I like the fact that it, it's actually pretty straightforward. You pick either black powder weapons, crossbow or bow and arrow style missile weapons, or any kind of close combat weapon. They don't get more technical than that. Either you've got guns, something else that shoots, or you've got... Uh, close combat weapons. No one gets anything really special. It's like your commander has commander stats. Your toadies have toady stats. Your various different kind of soldiers have the soldier stats and they're actually pretty similar. I like the fact that there's nothing too overly crazy about each of the follower types. There's a thing in this game called cults and it's the one thing that I actually feel is the unbalancer. If you play Turnip 28 without cults, it is a far superior war game to Actually, a lot of different games, but still. Uh, the cults are really what muddy up the game, but they also kind of add flavor and fun. So if you just want to fight things out, you can fight it out with your basic guys. The cults, though, are where you get crazy with, like, conversions and modeling. And they do get crazy. Going back to the original Turn of 28 that I had, like, looking at this Uprising the Laos, you don't have followers. You're just snobs in this hound master looking to hunt guys down. You have this one model called the Tall Man that gazes over the battlefield and gives your guys essentially really good special abilities. But you're facing off against everybody else's full-fledged force with just your officers. What would that be in a standard game? The Houndmaster, because you get a plus one with him. Your Toph and two Toadies, so you have four guys kicking around the battlefield. 
I forgot if it's a different. Does the Houndmaster have a separate dog? It's one unit with a shared profile. Yeah, okay. Those guys literally, it was a crazy, insane army that you pretty much could bring five units and face off against just about anybody. In the new version, thankfully the rules have been tweaked so you actually still get followers and whatnot, but you have your, your tall man figure, which can represent just any side of execution, really. And then you have your hound master. You no longer get the crazy special abilities, but at least, at least for the most part, you have a force that's similar to other people's forces as well. You do get other forces that have interesting things, like these guys can fire rockets. There are balloons. They have giant cannons. Yes, giant cannons. You can even pull a, a Baron Munkhausen and launch your own heroes from this cannon. It's pretty interesting. Uh, there's two other factions that make me go, what? One of them is Todd's Folly. Check this one out. Misplaced confidence. Whenever the winners and losers are declared at the end of a melee bout or shooting engagement, winners and losers are swapped. Okay, so I could build a really shitty army and just go into the face of my, you know, supremely tripped out enemy and lose all the time and I would win the game. It says no funny business. This is not endlessly repeat upon itself. But the thing is, what if you're always losing though? Doesn't it say that at the at the uh, at the melee bouts winners and losers are swapped? If your unit was declared the winner, they're now the loser. Yeah. If that's the case, then yes, that can carry on endlessly. It does not take effect if one unit is completely destroyed. Oh. So if I bring like really tiny units and then I get wiped out, that's my fault. I guess that's a balancing factor. But for the most part, this is very strange where you can technically throw all your matches and win. It says it does not repeat upon itself, but then how do you determine when a winner is a loser and a loser is a winner if you're consistently the loser round after round, therefore you're consistently the winner? This one has some real head gymnastics going on there. The faction I actually like the most, kind of, is called the Leech Lovers, which is funny because they have this weird thing where you give your opponent dice they have to play with. 12 of them. And every time that they roll an unmodified, you know, a, a natural six, you get to steal that uh, six. I think you're limited to stealing one at a time, by the way. I don't think it's all sixes, just one at a time. But it might, it doesn't clarify that here either. It says you can never steal your opponent's last dice, even if it was a six. There is a rule that says you put uh, two dice back into the hands of your opponent at the end of the turn, so they only ever have between like one or three dice. If you're playing a very nefarious strategy where you just let your opponent roll sixes and just steal the dice and never use them, and so the opponent is left rolling one to three dice only ever for doing anything throughout the entire game. I mean, you could spend the lifeblood dice to get these amazing little special abilities, or you could just take the more amazing special ability that's your natural faction bonus and just let your opponents wallow in having one or three dice, depending what time it is in the game, throughout the entire game. That's one of my, my opinions about a well-reinforced opinion about turn up 28 is that the, the, the cults are there for flavor. They do not balance out the game, nor do they make the game fun. This Leech Lovers faction is for assholes because you pass the opponent the dice. The opponent has to use those dice. So honestly speaking, this game can be... It has some weird twist to it. Turn Up 28 as it stands is a game that is very unique in its standing. And it also calls out to the converter and to the hobbyist and to the artist and all of us when it comes to playing our games. Taking a quick blast at this site for Sludge, the war game. Sludge is actually one of uh, Sean Sutter's, so it's off the relicblade.com site. Looking at it, it doesn't have its own rule book. It's part of the Blaster 3 anthology, as I've mentioned earlier. So the Blaster 3 is where you'd actually find that. It has a link to it. The one thing this site does that's kind of cool, I mean, it has official sludge miniatures. They're, they're bits you convert other miniatures from. It even says here that you build stuff, and it mentions Perry miniatures. I'd recommend them, too. They're pretty good. It actually has a section on how to collect and build an army. Sludge is more of a hobby game than Relic Blade or Warhammer 40k, for example. Well, yes, you have to convert your own stuff. Here he shows how he converts some uh, American Civil War figures into one of his armies. 
It's funny because he describes the uniforms as being brutal twice. It's like the war was brutal. The uniforms were actually overly simple. Like American Civil War uniforms, the Southern ones were essentially civilian uniforms at the uh, end of the war, honestly. He does a lot of photography to show his product, and I like that. It actually has what it takes to uh, build a list. It doesn't have any stats for but you can build off of this. I myself have actually built a prototype sludge force based on this. The commander, the heroes, line infantry. Line infantry are nice. They're separate from other types. They allow you to have access to elite units for each unit you have of line infantry. By the way, it has down there like skirmishers and cavalry. Note that only some of them say elite, so you could probably bring a force full of Jaegers and light cavalry and have it still qualify without bringing a single bit of line infantry. I also like the fact that field guns are not field guns are not considered elite. So technically, you can bring 20 field guns if you wanted to. I might just do that. And of course, there's a sample army list and it has terrain, which is pretty identical to the terrain I would build for like a Chaos World or like a War of Cthulhu or for Turn Up 28. In fact, he even mentions great roots, sacred roots that can heal your guys. Yeah, kind of leaning back to Turn Up 28. I like the, the presentation here. I like the fact that the lists are available to be built right here. So the fact these are immediately available does help out quite a bit. So looking at both games, it's too new to tell anything definite about these games. But I'll definitely say that Sludge seems the more normal of the two of them, whereas Turn of 28 is an artist's fever dream nightmare rampage of insanity and fun, albeit mud-covered, blood-drenched fun. And my own biases are towards Turn of 28. It is the first of the two, but honestly speaking, they both have their advantages. I do like the basic rule set behind Turn Up 28. As someone once commented though, it looks like everybody with a cool idea was allowed to contribute that cool idea to Turn Up 28. And so the cults, you know, built on additional flavor, but it's the kind of flavor that you get when you throw everything that possibly exists into the pot to stew. And then you have Sludge, which is, uh, if you ask me, the gore mechanic in Sludge is kind of interesting in that the dead bodies in a battlefield are specifically given presence and psychological value. But weirdly enough, you can do stuff like sing your regimental song to make the bodies go away. Honestly, they both have their advantages. Sludge is probably easier to pick up and play and has more that's in common with the average war game you've had before. 40k players would probably want to play Sludge. Whereas I would say someone who's into indie games or someone who actually likes a simple game where the visuals don't matter as much to the game, but you can have fun with the visuals however you want to, I would say Turnip 28 would actually be a better choice unless they wanted to go full cult, in which case, you know, it, all bets are off. <laughs> to be fair, what I said previously about this being very new and we have yet to see how everything's going to play out is, is certain. This may just be a fad. This game and its, and its fellows may be gone in the next five years and flavorfully into my dead games pile. Maybe it grows into something that's humongous that people play. Although that would mean there'd be a large uh, shift towards converting and people having hobby interest in their war games, not just playing the games. My thoughts toward this are that I appreciate it and I like the direction this crazy, crazy little aspect of the new hobby is going into. I don't think I'll be making anything for it immediately, but it's definitely on my list of things I can possibly do. Thank you for watching the video and hopefully you have a great rest of your day. May it not be covered in mud and turnip roots.